Gabriel Zamora just came out and did a whole Snapchat story talking about Tati Westbrook as well as the new video from PewDiePie and talking more about this James Charles situation. So in this video, we're gonna break it down a little bit, but we're gonna be talking about the very, very, very important subject of confirmation bias. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is take a look at the YouTube community or pop culture, see all the drama going on, and try to turn this mess and turn it into a message, all right? So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. Okay, so yeah, Gabriel Zamora just made a long Snapchat story just talking about Tati Westbrook and he talks a little bit more about the details in the, of the situation um, that Tati Westbrook uh, described when it comes to James Charles and the waiter from Seattle. I talked a little bit about that in my last video. I hope you guys check it out. Um, I, I try to offer a new perspective because in so many of these situations we get this kind of confirmation bias, all right? First, let's talk about what the hell is confirmation bias, okay? Confirmation bias is something that no matter who you are, unless you're like the supreme like Buddhist monk, we all have confirmation bias, okay? It is our mind's natural tendency to grasp on and find things that can confirm the beliefs that we already had, okay? It makes sense. Now, they've actually done neurological studies on this thing where they have hooked people up to brain scans where it shows that people who have a certain belief, right, they get in pain if something tries to disagree with their belief or if new information is present. That is why people get so defensive about these situations, all right? So, long story short, being right feels good. Being wrong feels bad. So, this is also a problem with our ego. Our ego is so fragile. Our ego wants us to be right. What we know is true. Any new information is wrong. And it kind of sucks because it, it, it skews our perception of reality, which hurts our ability to be objective in any situation. And like I said, everybody has this problem. The best thing that we can do is be aware of this issue and try to take a step back and say, okay, what kind of biases do I have going into this situation? So in PewDiePie's video, he took a look at it and he made his whole video about it. I talked about that in a different video. And something that doesn't sit right with me is a lot of people are saying, oh, PewDiePie doesn't know enough about the situation. PewDiePie even said he doesn't know all, all, all he needs to know about the situation. The reality is, PewDiePie not being involved in the beauty community or the drama is probably the best person to talk about this situation because he doesn't have any biases going into this thing. He hasn't met any of these people. He doesn't have any skin in the game. So this is the type of the person that you would want to speak on the subject. And I would argue like for anybody saying that PewDiePie isn't, doesn't know everything about the situation, like Tati Westbrook made an entire 40 minute video that PewDiePie watched. I would say he's pretty much caught up to speed aside from some of the other allegations floating, floating around on the internet, which I'll touch on a little bit later. But I will say this, where does PewDiePie's confirmation bias come in? Well, I believe that although he is an outsider on this situation, PewDiePie is somebody who has been attacked many, many, many times throughout his career. So I would imagine that his bias is that he's a little bit more empathetic to anybody who's getting attacked the way James Charles is in this situation. But we have to ask ourselves, when Gabriel Zamora saw PewDiePie's video, right or wrong, how much bias did Gabriel Zamora have? Obviously, he feels hurt by Tati, so anything that he sees that's going against Tati is going to play into Gabriel Zamora's confirmation bias. Now, same thing with all of us, right? Like, no matter what side of this you're on, you're going to find things that agree with your opinion, right? If you think James Charles is a monster, you're gonna agree with that. If you think uh, this thing has been blown out of propor proportion, you're gonna find things that agree with that. Now, I'm not here to say which one's right or wrong, but I just want you to get, you to get your wheels turning because so many of us get stuck in this autopilot and with so much information being thrown out there right now, like we, we just don't even pay attention to the way our mind is working, the way our ego is working, the way our confirmation bias is working, and all of these things. Now, 
Something else that we need to think about when it comes to Gabriel Zamora, Tati Westbrook, James Charles, and pretty much anybody. Like, this is why we need to really try to practice empathy for anybody involved in any situation, is that we often forget that we are only seeing the external world of that of a person that we're looking at, right? We don't know what kind of life experiences have built up to the moment that they're currently in. So one of the reasons that, I don't know, that one would argue that these people are coming out and vocalizing different things and saying different parts of the story and everything like that is because one person's perspective is their reality. Now, the second thing I wanna talk about, because the first one is, people with their confirmation bias on the side of James Charles. The other side that I wanna talk about is everybody who is against James Charles in this situation because something absolutely terrible and absolutely disgusting is happening right now and I'm gonna link down below the new video from I'm Alex. I'm Alex summarized it perfectly, all right? I touched on this briefly but like I had a whole video planned. I had a whole video planned and I didn't even have, I didn't have the guts that I am Alex did to call out what's going on and he, he discussed it perfectly. What am I talking about? Somebody creating a fake story about assault on James Charles. It was completely fabricated, all right? So go check out I am Alex's video. He has some pretty strong evidence that this was all fake, including the fact that these DMs were photoshopped. But what I wanna to talk to you, what I wanna to talk to you about is something that I will talk about until the day I die because it is deja vu from 2016. And here's what it is. What freaks me out is that that tweet, that tweet with this bogus story with such a, a, a serious claim against James Charles had 20 4,000 retweets, okay? 24,000 people spread this misinformation, the lies about James Charles, and you know why? Because confirmation bias. You guys, it is possible for somebody to be a bad friend and not be like the worst person on the planet. It is possible for somebody like James Charles to have a massive ego, to overcharge for his uh, uh, his sister's tour. It's possible for him to have messy relationships. It's possible for all those things to happen without him actually assaulting somebody. And that is the problem with the massive, massive issue with confirmation bias is because we forget that. People have such black and white thinking and it is just such a terrible thing for our society, all right? Because people are so quick to spread misinformation simply because they don't like somebody without even realizing it. They're like, you know what? I don't like that person, so this must be true. And you guys really gotta check in with that. You gotta check in with that. And the reason why I brought up 2016 is because that is was a major problem during the last elections. I'm gonna say this, in 2016, when Donald Trump was elected, I was absolutely baffled and confused by so many things. I'm like, how did this happen? Much like many other people. And I just, I'm, I'm very analytical and I started analyzing everything, right? And I started looking around and I was listening to some people, like um, political commentators analyzing the situation. And they were talking about, you know, people spreading misinformation and how many people I saw on Facebook, like friends and family members on Facebook, just sharing posts from like non-reputable websites, like they were the word of gospel. You know what I mean? And that's one of the issues with YouTube and social media is, I was thinking about this, with this James Charles situation, like why, why are some of these serious allegations not on the mainstream news. And here's why. Because the YouTube community, it is the wild, wild west when it comes to journalism. Like, if, if that person, if that person who accused James Charles of these horrible things went to an actual news organization, there would be an interview, there would have to be evidence, because any journalist, any journalist who tried to bring that to their editor without the proper evidence with uh, uh, and making such a serious claim, their editor would just smack them right in the face. But the problem is, 
is that we're living in this world where the court of public opinion and people's emotions overrun them. People can just make up fake information, share fake information, um, but even going back to people like Gage or that waiter, you know, like YouTube's an amazing thing because people can have a voice and speak their 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 side of the story, you know. But here's here's what everybody keeps forgetting is that whenever you get out of any type of relationship, you're always the victim, right? Like how many relationships? do we get out of where we're like, oh no, 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 I was just totally in the wrong. It is a very rare occasion. We always think that we're a victim. So I believe, in my opinion, that's one of the reasons why so many people are going to the sides of people like Gage or people like, I'm sorry, I forgot the waiter kid's name, but people are going to their side because they're like, you know what, you're right, you're right. I think that James Charles is an awful person. Tati Westbrook said he's an awful person. People online are saying he's an awful person. So yeah, I'm gonna go side with this, this other kid. And people are completely neglecting facts, evidence, text messages, like, I, I don't know. But anyways, well, the last thing I would just wanna remind you guys is like, please check in with your confirmation bias in any situation that you're going into. All right, any situation, like whether it's like sharing news stories, when you're bickering with people online, like check in with your own biases and see what's going on because this affects us in our everyday life. Like you might have a bias against, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, fat guys with beards, all right? You might instantly not like me because you met some fat guy with a beard a long time ago, or hell, maybe you don't like me and now you have a prejudice against fat guys with a beard. I don't know what it is, but this plays into so many aspects of our lives. And because of this, we don't walk into situations giving people a fair chance, all right? So whether Gabriel Zamora's in the right, where whether Tati Westbrook is right, whether James Charles is right, or anything like that, Regardless, all of us struggle with confirmation bias. We just need to have some self-awareness about it, all right? So do me a favor, quit spreading misinformation on the internet. It is not good. <laughs> if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to get your name up on the credits, get access to our monthly Q&A, some other perks and benefits, click or tap right there. All right? Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.